When we first started talking about orchestrations, we opened the discussion by looking at a simple purchasing process. And we examined some of the things that could happen if we relied on individual systems to govern that process from end to end. We found that a few things could fall through the gaps. And one of the questions that lingered was, who is responsible for cleaning up when something goes wrong? So then we looked at the idea of automating that business process by using an orchestration to coordinate all of the actions required for that process. And we saw that we could really benefit by taking advantage of an orchestration's ability to handle errors and manage transactions. Now there's actually another benefit that we can derive from that as well. And that is the fact that we can rely on the orchestration to collect information about each instance of that business process as it is executing. After all, with the orchestration coordinating all of the activity and having access to all of the data that's required for the business process, it would know more about what's going on within that process than any other system. So to answer that call, BizTalk offers something called business activity monitoring that allows us to configure our orchestrations to collect data from each instance of the process in real time. And then it gives us a way to view that data as well. And we're not limited to simply collecting data from orchestrations, by the way. We can collect data from send and receive ports, and we can even collect data from applications outside of BizTalk. In fact, there are components available that are specifically designed to collect data from Windows Workflow Foundation applications, as well as services based on WCF. And on top of that, there is a .NET API that you can take advantage of to report business activity data from any .NET application. We're going to start off this module developing a background in understanding what business activity monitoring is and how we can make use of it. We'll step through the process of applying business activity monitoring to our applications. In this first part, we'll take a look at some examples that describe why we might want to apply business activity monitoring to our applications. And then second, we'll look beneath the surface a little bit to get a better understanding of what business activity monitoring, or BAM, is actually doing and how it works. And then we'll talk about the individual components that make up the BAM infrastructure. Okay, so we know that BAM can collect data from an instance of a business process while it is executing. And we know that that data could come from BizTalk applications, as well as applications outside of BizTalk. But the question remains, what can we actually do with that data? Or what kind of questions can we answer with it? Well, you can see a few examples on this slide. If we had one of the components in our process report the amount of an order that it was handling, then we could query BAM to find out how many orders have been processed that are over $10,000. If we instructed the component in our application that first receives an order for processing to report the time that it received an order, and then we instructed any of the components that would complete the processing of an order to report the completion time, then we could rely on BAM to calculate the duration of each of those order processes, and we could query for the average duration or even the maximum or minimum duration. If we instructed a component in our application to report the product IDs included in every order, we could query BAM to find how many times a given product has been ordered in a specific time period, such as the last 24 hours. And we can also define milestones within our process so we can see how many orders have been received but are waiting to be processed. We could find how many orders have been canceled and how many orders have been delivered. And we can get pretty sophisticated with those queries, such as what is the average duration for orders for a given product that have been delivered in the past 24 hours? And with BizTalk facilitating the overall business process, as it does that work, we can get a clear and current picture of what's going on within our business. And if we incorporate this BAM capability into other applications as well, so that they can report business activity data, that will help us develop an even more comprehensive view of current activity. So BAM then consists of a set of databases as well as a set of components for interacting with those databases. And it also includes an ASP.NET application that serves as a portal that provides a view on this business activity data. There is also a Microsoft Excel add-in 
and that add-in provides a means for a business analyst to specify which data they would like to collect from a business process. BAM also takes advantage of SQL Server analysis services to create OLAP cubes for aggregation of the BAM data. So by taking advantage of the features implemented in BAM, users can gain a broad and a deep understanding of the state of their business processes. BAM allows a user to view the data at a very high level, looking at aggregations of data that summarize thousands of transactions and also have the capability to drill all the way down into a single instance of the business process. And it gives users a way to present that data in whatever format is the most appropriate, whether those are charts or reports or updates to key performance indicators. And you can even configure BAM to send out alerts when certain conditions are met based on the BAM data. You might, for example, want to send out a notification if the average duration of an order process exceeds some given threshold. And by the way, system administrators and developers might also find it very useful to take advantage of BAM. It's often useful to collect lower level data that may not be of interest to a business analyst, but it can provide one more way to monitor the health of an application. And that can be very useful if you need to provide metrics that show that the application is meeting the requirements of a service level agreement. BAM was designed to have the ability to collect business activity data in real time without impacting the performance of a BizTalk group that is processing a high volume of messages. So BAM is composed of quite a few components, but you can see the core components listed here. And central to all of this is the BAM primary import database. You could say that that database serves as the rendezvous point for all of the business activity data that is being collected. In some cases, such as with orchestrations, the BAM data is actually first written to the message box database, and then later it is transferred from the message box to the BAM primary import database by a service known as the BAM event bus service, which is also known as the tracking data and decode service. And you can actually view that data in real time, provided that that option was enabled when the business analyst defined which data they wanted to collect and how they want to view it. Calculating those real-time aggregations, of course, can be costly in terms of performance. So it's more likely that you will want to use OLAP cubes to calculate those aggregations. And under those circumstances, the data will be copied from the BAM primary import database to the BAM star schema database, which serves as a staging area for the OLAP cubes. Now the components that actually collect the data that is written to the BAM databases are known as BAM interceptors. You could think of a BAM interceptor as a wiretap. There are pre-built BAM interceptors that know how to collect data from pipelines and orchestrations. And you can use a tool called the Tracking Profile Editor to configure those interceptors to collect specific data values at specific points in the business process. And then there are two other interceptors as well, one of which can be configured to collect data from a Windows workflow application, and the other one can be used to collect data from a WCF service. And there would be a lot more to talk about with regard to the BAM architecture. But understanding this set of components gives you enough information to start applying BAM to your applications. All right, well, let's start talking about what it takes to enable BAM in our applications. And in general, the process will start with the business analyst creating a list of data that they would like to see collected and the format in which they would like to see it presented. And that set of information is known collectively as a BAM definition. Once that's complete, a BizTalk administrator can take that BAM definition and deploy it to a BizTalk environment. And then it will be up to a developer to use the tracking profile editor to configure the interceptors that need to collect that data. I should mention, by the way, that the WF and WCF interceptors cannot be configured with the tracking profile editor. You can see the details of what is required to configure those interceptors by taking a look at the notes for Module 17. We'll talk about what's available in the BAM portal, and then finally we'll close with a demonstration. Any data that will be collected or reported by BAM 
first needs to be specified up front in a document known as a BAM definition. And the best way to create a BAM definition is to use the Excel add-in. The add-in provides a wizard that will walk you through the process of creating the definition. The first step in that process is to define one or more BAM activities. A BAM activity defines a collection of data values that provide enough information to provide a summary of the history of an instance of a business process. So those could be date-time values representing milestones within the business process, or they might be text or numerical values representing specific details about that instance of the business process. Values such as an order ID or product IDs. Now just because a value is defined in a BAM activity, that does not mean that that value could actually be collected from the application anywhere. It is just saying that that is a value that the business analyst would like to see collected, if possible. So the BAM activity defines the discrete values that should be collected, and then each activity can have one or more views defined that specify how the BAM activity data should be prepared for presentation. That might include filtering rules or aliases that define more friendly names for the values, or calculations such as a duration between two milestones. And you can also define dimensions and measures for calculating aggregations in the OLAP cubes. And again, we typically think of a business analyst creating a BAM definition, but there's nothing that precludes an administrator or developer from creating BAM definitions for technical uses. Once the business analyst completes the BAM definition, they can hand that off to an administrator for deployment. They can either export the definition to an XML file, or they can just send the entire Excel workbook and the administrator can take it from there. The administrator is going to use the BAM management tool to deploy the BAM definition, and that's a command line tool. And this slide shows an example of the syntax required to deploy a BAM definition file. The BAM management tool can also deploy a BAM definition that is stored as an Excel workbook. When the administrator deploys the BAM definition, the BAM management tool is going to use the information from that definition file to create all of the database tables and stored procedures and any other database objects that are required to implement that BAM definition. And then finally, once the definition is deployed, it's up to the developer to configure the interceptors to collect the data values specified in the BAM activity, and you would use the Tracking Profile Editor to establish those configurations. When you open the Tracking Profile Editor, you will be able to load any of the BAM activity definitions that have been deployed to the BizTalk Management Database, and then you'll be able to select from the various components within your application, whether those are receive or send ports or orchestrations. And then you'll be able to specify which component should report each of the business activity items by simply dragging and dropping the business activity item onto a component. For example, if you want the ID of an order to be collected by the receive shape in your orchestration, you simply drag the node that represents the order ID in the business activity definition and drop that onto the receive shape in the orchestration. And if a business activity item corresponds to a message context property, you can drag and drop that item onto the corresponding node in the message context schema and then specify the receive port that should initialize that value. Once you have completed that process, you can save all of that configuration information to a file, and then you will also need to access a command on the Tools menu to apply that tracking profile to your BizTalk application to enable the BAM components to start collecting that data. Once you have everything set up and message traffic starts passing through your application, you can visit the BAM portal, which is an ASP.NET application that allows you to view the data that is being collected. It's certainly possible to use other tools, such as SQL Server reporting services, to view the BAM data, but the BAM portal is the easiest way to access it when you're just getting started. One of the things that the BAM portal will present is a pivot table that will allow you to view the aggregations that you've defined. And it also provides a chart representation of that data. And then as you can see on this slide, you can access the BAM data by defining a query. And in the query result page, you can even drill in 
to see the values that were collected for a specific instance of the business process. In this demonstration, I will show you how to use the BAM management tool to deploy a BAM definition file. And then I will show you how you can use the tracking profile editor to apply the interceptor configuration to an application. And then I'll send some message traffic through the application and show you how you can view the data in the BAM portal. OK, here we are in the virtual machine. In this demo, we're going to apply business activity monitoring to a sample application. We already have a business activity definition that would have been created by a business analyst. And so we'll start with the administrator's task of deploying that definition. In the lab exercise, you'll have a chance to step through the process of creating the actual BAM activity definition using the Excel add-in. All right, so I need to open a command window in order to run the BAM manager tool to handle the deployment. And I will need to change to the BizTalk tracking directory. All right, now I'll use the BAM manager tool to deploy the definition file. And it is in the demo code module 12 folder, and it is named order management.xml. OK, so by specifying deploy all on the command line, the BAM management tool deployed all activities, views, and security configurations that it found in that BAM definition file. All right, now we can move on to the tracking profile editor. OK, I'm going to open a pre-configured tracking profile. And again here, you'll be able to create one of these step by step in the lab exercise. All right, well, you can see the data items defined by the BAM activity in the left-hand view. And then you'll be able to see the components in the right-hand view that are configured to collect those values. As an example, let's take a look at the BAM activity item named City. You can see that when I click on the City node and expand it, that this maps to the City field within a purchase order message. And this value is going to be collected in a receive port. Now there's a milestone named Approved. And that value will be collected as the fulfillment delay shape executes in our orchestration. All right, now in order to instruct the BAM interceptors to start collecting this data, let's apply this tracking profile. All right, at this point, we're ready to send some message traffic through and then we can go view the data that was collected in the BAM portal. OK, this batch file sends 20 purchase order messages through the application. Now let's go visit the BAM portal. All right, in the left-hand pane, you can see the name of a view that was specified in the BAM definition file. So we can go look at an aggregation that it defines named order progress. OK, so here's a pivot table that will display our data. We don't have any yet. It's still in process. So I'm going to click on this red icon to refresh the view. And it's going to take a little while for the data to show up. 
because SQL Analysis Services is only going to refresh its cache every few minutes for this application. Okay, we have some data. You can see that we have nine orders that were approved and 11 that were denied. And then we have a chart representation of that data over here. Okay, let's send 20 more messages through. And eventually these new orders will show up and the numbers will update. Now we can see the detail breakdown by right clicking and then choosing show results. And this will take us to a report and list the individual instances that were included in that aggregation. And if we double click on any of those records, we can see all of the detail that has been collected for that instance. Okay, let's go create a query. And we're going to look for all orders that will be shipped to the city of Los Angeles. And we want to see all of the fields that are available for those instances. Okay, here we can see the individual orders that were processed. And it shows us all of the BAM activity items that were collected for each instance. And if we select one, we can see the details as we saw before. Okay, there you have it, business activity monitoring. In this lab, you're going to be able to take this process from start to finish. You'll begin by using the Excel add-in to define a business activity, and then you'll create a view for that business activity. And when that's complete, you'll export the BAM definition to an XML file, and then you'll deploy that to the BizTalk Management database. After that, you'll use the Tracking Profile Editor to configure the BAM interceptors that will be collecting the data, and then you'll apply that to your application. And after you send some messages through the application, you'll be able to go to the BAM portal and view the data that was collected.